So in this video, I'm going to talk about two major things. So first of all, I will explain you how we can visualize uh, the data of a single variable. In addition to that, in the second part of this uh, uh, video, I will explain you how we can use uh, two variables to uh, explicate data. So under the same context, I'll show you how to make different types of graphs like histograms, line graphs, and scatter plots and so on. So for this example or for this video, I'm going to use three major data sets. So one is my own data sets related to the Sri Lanka census, which we have used in the previous video. And secondly, I'm going to use two inbuilt data sets, which are iris flower data sets, which consist of 50 samples from each of the three uh, three flower species. And second, I'm going to use uh, data extracted from uh, 19 which related to car or tests. So first of all, uh, let's talk about how we can uh, use uh, how we can use R for the distribution of single uh, quantitative variables. So first of all, I am going to uh, import the data set that we are using. So for this example, I have uh, I am going to take the variable or the CSV file that we have used in the previous data set. So uh, in this uh, uh, data set, we have a total population and also the income of people, uh, male and female individual population as well, with respect to the each uh, DS division of Sri Lanka. So. So when you are working with single quantitative variables, the most common uh, uh, and box plot. So for this first example, I'll demonstrate you how we can uh, use R Studio to visualize uh, numerical data in a histogram. So histograms are really uh, valuable in working with uh, statistics statistics field. So it uh, helps us to uh, visualize large amount of data and the frequency of that data value. So in addition to that, uh, we can determine the medium by using this histogram. Or, and also, we can identify if there is any outliers or gaps in the data as well. So for that, uh, we can use the, first of all, I have assigned the census into a new variable. And then I am going to specify the column or the data numerical variable that we are going to create as uh, histogram so histogram so so by uh, using the, this hist function we can easily create a histogram for this data set so we'll run this code so in you can see here or histogram in the histogram here uh, right skewed uh, histogram you can experience because most of the data are uh, into the aligned into a left side so in here you can see the uh, the population and also the frequency so you can uh, zoom it in a separate window i want to open it as a separate window so each uh, uh, range, each bar represents a 500 value. So you can see here from 500 to population is the with the in between 1000 to 1500 has the highest amount of frequency with respect to the population, and it gradually decreases to the to the right side. So in this way, you can create a, a histogram based on your data. So the box plot is another way that we can use to uh, use to examine the uh, distribution of data uh, with respect to a single variable. So uh, you can, in order to uh, create a box plot of the relevant data set, you can use the box plot uh, function and specify the which column is based on the uh, data set so for this example also i'm going to take i'm going to take the total population uh, column and then we can uh, 
specify the topic of the the topic of the uh, box plot and also the x label and y label also so likewise we can specify the labels as well uh, using this r studio so we'll run and see how it distributed so let's zoom in so now you can see here the media so now you can see the uh, interquartile ranges and extremes as well all the extremes and the first uh, interquartile range is here and you can see the uh, thick black line uh, denotes the median value and also the second quartile range is this and you can see the uh, first and third interquartile range here so in this course uh, we are going to use this uh, box plots uh, fairly a bit so with the uh, box plot you can get a summary of uh, the formalized descriptive statistics with the box plot so these are the two main uh, ways which is the histogram and the box plot uh, we can use to uh, examine the distribution of single quantitative variables so in the next part i am going to show you how we can use uh, different uh, visualization methods to uh, identify or else map uh, relationship with, uh, shifts between two quantitative variables so for this uh, example i am going to use this empty cast data set which is a built in uh, data set so if i explain a bit about this uh, data set so you can get information like miles per gallon uh, in this uh, a means the transmission whether it is uh, auto or manual number of gear number of gears number of carburetors available in that particular vehicle likewise so the these are to get a uh, very brief idea about uh, this particular data set these are these uh, functions are not really important for us to plot the data set So we'll run this program. So we can simply uh, create a scatter plot using this uh, data set by specifying the x and y variables. So you just have to specify which, what is x variable and what is the y variable. So in here I have specified miles per gallon uh, of this uh, data set as the x variable. So by looking at this uh, scatter plot, you can see when the miles per gallon increase. Uh, the number of horsepower increase uh, the number of horsepower decrease however in order to give a meaningful representation it is better we change the independent and dependent variable whereas the uh, independent variable has the horsepower and the dependent variable which is y axis as the dependent variable so in this way you can clearly see when the horsepower increase of the vehicle uh, the miles per gallon of that vehicle uh, decrease so it uh, represents uh, an inverse relationship between horsepower and the miles per gallon so we can also use bra plots uh, to display categorical data sets so in here i am going to show you how we can use bar charts to uh, display or visualize, uh, visualize uh, categorical data set. So for this uh, example, I have selected empty cars uh, data set and use its uh, cylinders, number of cylinders variable to evaluate the, the, its uh, categorical frequency. So we can, <coughs> for that uh, we can use the bar, bar plot uh, function and I am using the data set as the car data which I have assigned it to a variable previously and provide the topic of the uh, graph and the x variable or the x label so we'll run it again and now you can see there are around 11 vehicles with 4 cylinders engine and there are 8 uh, vehicles if you zoom in eight vehicles with four uh, sorry 14 
vehicles with it. So if you want to make a horizontal bar graph, we just have to add this argument and specify the uh, bar plot to be uh, display as a horizontal. So you can see here now we can uh, get the data as a, a horizontal bar graph. So in R, another widely used library for improved data visualization which is called ggplot2. So first of all we uh, use this ggplot2 library, we have to install the package using the package installer and then we can import the ggplot2 use for the purpose of data visualization. So uh, in uh, one of the simplest function in ggplot2 library is qplot. So unlike the other method or the previous method, uh, when, you plot, when you plot with the qplot function, uh, you, can, uh, you can clearly identify the robust visualization in this method. So for an example, in here I have specified the x variable as the mpg or the miles per gallon and horsepower and then specify the data set that needs to be used as the var2. So let's run this program. So when you run this program, you can get a clear view and much more uh, pleasant visualization than the previous method. So if you compare with the previous one, so let's plot this again and clearly see the difference. So in when with the uh, qplot uh, graph, it is much more visually uh, visually convenient than the previous method. So likewise the best aspect of qplot is that you can create much better additional arguments to the qplot uh, uh, function. So for an example, you can change the color as well. So I run the program. So in here you can see we have added another variable, another argument color and we assign it to the AM which uh, denotes the transmission of the particular vehicle. So we know uh, when considering vehicles in this data set, there is only two types, which can be either manual or else uh, automatic. However, in the legend, you can see they, are, they have mentioned it as a numeric value, numeric values, which changes from zero to one. However, as I mentioned before, it is a categorical data set which can either be automatic or manual. So the reason is that uh, the R studio consider it as a numeric the R. So however, we can uh, change for the purpose of visualization while we assigning the uh, argument. So we just have to use this, the factor function and we can change it to a uh, factor or a string variable rather than a numeric file. So we'll run it again. So now you can see it denotes only uh, two items in the legend. So the previous one, you can see there are multiple uh, changing values. In here, there is only two values. So in addition to that, we can assign an other variable, other arguments as well. For an example, we can change the size of this each uh, point based on another variable, based on another variable available in the data set. So if we run this again, so you can see now the size of these uh, points have been increased or decreased based on the number of gears available in the particular car. So apart from that, we can uh, add labels as well. So in here you can see, you just have to add another uh, argument, XLAB and YLAB, and you can assign the independent and dependent uh, variable labels. So I, in here I have assigned x variable as x label as the miles per gallon and y as the horsepower. Uh, apart from that, you can also add the topic uh, main topic for the graph as well. 
you can see the changes you can see the changes has happened uh, like the main topic as the miles per gallon and also it has given the x and y variables as well so if you want to uh, export this uh, data set you can save it as a pdf or save it as an uh, uh, image file as, as well so you can just specify the directory and get it as either landscape or portrait depending on your requirement so apart from that you can change the uh, uh, chart type also in default it will consider uh, if you not assign the argument for the ge or geom it will consider it as a, a scatter plot however you can always change, however you can always change the type of graph and here i have uh, specified as a line graph so it will generate a line graph uh, instead of the default scatter plot you should also uh, note that uh, specifying a color makes sense only for the categorical data sets not for numerical data sets with decimal values so in that example you can clearly see we have specified we uh, we have specified uh, once we specified as a factor it gives us a correct representation of the transmission whether it is an manual or a, uh, automatic so if you try to color based on the numeric value it will not give an accurate representation or a uh, meaningful representation so now i'm going to introduce you how we can use this qplot uh, library or the ggplot2 library uh, when working with histograms so for this example i'm going to use flower dataset consist of 50 samples from each of the uh, three pieces so this uh, data set is uh, called iris flower data set because uh, in this research they have used uh, three related species to the iris flowers so uh, as i mentioned before this data set consists of 50 samples from each of the three species which are setosa uh, virginica and versicolor uh, so if you look at the particular data set uh, it has uh, they have measured four features of each flower which are the length width of the the uh, sepals and petals in centimeters so in here you can see there are 150 entries which represent 50 uh, elements or the 50 samples for the each species of uh, iris flower so now let's see how we can prepare histograms using the qplot so in here i have uh, specified the sepal uh, with uh, as the histogram variable and then i have specified the geometry or the type of graph as histogram and also included the y label as the count of the so we'll run this So now you can see it gives a uh, accurate representation of the uh, distribution and when you compare it with the previous uh, histogram that we have created for the first example for the first example uh, library is much more uh, pleasant in terms of visualization so like the previous uh, example we can add uh, other uh, arguments as well so in here i have added the fill argument so if you run the program line of code you can see the data represent in different colors so it uh, accurately represent various species in three colors so we can also create box plot like we did before However, what's uh, speciality of this uh, box plot is that it can create box plot for each uh, species in the same graph. 
so we can easily compare the mean value ranges second quartile ranges the extreme is uh, and uh, of each of the species of the particular flower so if you zoom you can see the range of the set of flower here and also it's the median value so the two extremes are here and likewise you can uh, accurately represent uh, box plots of each species very conveniently and robust manner so in this way we can uh, use uh, ggplot2 library tool to improve our visualization so if you are able to run these codes without any uh, difficulties you should be able to use your own data uh, for visualization so before wrap up this long video i would like to introduce you to the facets so all this time we have used qplot of the ggplot library library to plot graphs however when you are working with facets you have to use another function which is ggplot so here i have specified the data set that we are going to use and the x and y variables of the uh, particular data set and here i am going to specify the facets as the point feature or the point representation like a scatter plot and then here facet underscore grid in here we specify that we are going to facet out the spaces uh, based so by assigning that it will create three separate uh, representations based on the each uh, species therefore it will create three different graph, uh, graphs for the setosa versicola and virginica there are actually multiple methods like glm lm and gam likewise so you can run so you can run this uh, uh, from different methods and see the changes so if i'm change this again to glm and run it again and you can see when comparing there are slight uh, variations of the glm and the uh, lm so this is how the uh, sepal width changes uh, and sepal width and uh, sepal length